Lord, we beseech thee to keep thy household, the church, in continual godliness, that through thy protection it may be free from all adversities, and devoutly given to serve thee in good works, to the glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O Almighty God, who has knit together thy elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of thy Son, Christ our Lord. Grant us grace so to follow thy blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those unspeakable joys which thou hast prepared for those who unfeignedly love thee, through the same thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The epistle for the 22nd Sunday after Trinity is taken from the epistle to the Philippians. I thank my God upon in every prayer of mine for you, all making requests with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, ye all are partakers of my grace. For God is my record, how greatly I long after you all in the tender mercies of Christ Jesus. And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, that ye may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, unto the glory and praise of God. Here endeth the epistle. Thanks be to God. God. Behold, how good and joyful the thing it is, brethren, to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointments upon the head that ran down unto the beard, even unto Aaron's beard. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Ye that fear the Lord, who shall trust in him, he is their helper and defender. Hallelujah.
Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Peter said unto Jesus, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him till seven times? Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him, which owed him ten thousand talents. But for as much as he had not to pay, his lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife and children, and all that he had, and payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Then the lord of that servant was moved with compassion, and loosed him, and forgave him all the debt. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him an hundred pence. And he laid hands on him, and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet, and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison, till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry, and came and told unto their lord all that was done. Then his lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt, because thou desirest me. Shouldst not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his lord was wroth, and delivered him to the tormentors, till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. Thus far the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to thee, thee O Christ. Christ. Who joined last week. 
Join us this Friday, November 13th at 10 a.m. for our monthly healing mass here at the church. Our annual meeting will be next Sunday, November 15th at 12 p.m. here at the church. So we'll just meet in the parish hall, probably keep it pretty brief, we'll just go over the most basic business of uh, looking at the budget from last year, um, and then uh, approve the budget for this year, and then we have to elect two new vestrymen. Um, and I'll probably just send out a report of uh, the year um, to everyone via email now. Um, if you read the newsletter, which of course I would say please read the newsletter, um, I put a little 10 year, because in December it will be 10 years since I've been the rector here. So I put a little, uh, <laughs> thank you. sort of greatest hits and <laughs> things, you know, it's kind of like the, the double album set, you know, you know have, so uh, check it out, that has some stuff in it, but um, I'll, I'll try to put something more specific for 2020 um, to send out, send out to the church. Um, so I think that that is it as far as the announcements go, oh, and uh, welcome to everyone watching online, I'm sorry about last week where we got cut off. Um, at both services, but this week both services appear to be online, so nice to have our viewing audience back at this time. So I think that's it as far as announcements go. Are there any other ones? Okay. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Jesus' parable today addresses the issue of forgiveness. Forgiveness suggests that there has been misbehavior, which puts in our minds some of the cliches which have crept into our way of thinking and talking about misbehavior. I'm thinking of cliches like, mistakes were made. We want to put this behind us. He wants to get on with his life. And of course the famous, everybody does it. Just after the beginning of creation, God put Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. He told them that they could do pretty much anything they wanted to do. His only warning was not to eat the fruits of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If they ate from that tree, they would die. The way Adam and Eve responded to God established the pattern of all human sin. First, they convinced themselves that God didn't really mean it about dying. And if that law did apply, it only applied to other people. Then came the actual act of disobedience, of open rebellion. But of course, it didn't really feel like open rebellion, because they had already convinced themselves that what might be sinful if other people did it was perfectly okay in their case. Next came the cover-up throwing up a smoke screen in hopes that God and anyone else who might have been wronged wouldn't notice. That got played out in the garden with the fig leaves, and Adam and Eve skulking around in the bushes when they heard God's footsteps approaching. Finally, after the rationalization, disobedience, and the cover-up comes the last inevitable act in the process of sin, which is shifting the blame. Adam and Eve did not want to admit they had done anything wrong, let alone accept responsibility for it. So Adam told God, the woman gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And Eve said, the serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. The story of Adam and Eve poses an extremely important question for each of us. The question is, can I face the fact that the story of Adam and Eve is a story about me? Because, as it turns out, everybody does do it. That is to say, everybody follows the same dreary pattern of rationalizing, disobeying, covering up, and shifting the blame with regard to sin. We call that pattern original sin, precisely because it is basic to our nature. It explains why things are not the way they ought to be. Original sin is what separates us from God and from one another. 
The individual sins we commit every day are symptoms of this overall condition of original sin, or sometimes we call it our sinful human nature. Now, that is not an excessively grim or pessimistic view of human nature. It is rather a realistic and honest view of human nature. Belief in original sin is fundamental to the Christian perspective on the world. If we don't believe in original sin, and that it is not just everybody else who's infected with it, we can't possibly appreciate what Jesus has done for us on the cross. One of the most moving passages in the New Testament appears in the Epistle to the Romans. St. Paul is as committed and informed a believer as anyone could possibly be. He's given his whole life for the cause of Jesus Christ. And yet, when he looks at himself honestly, he sees this same ugly pattern of original sin still working, despite his constant efforts to combat it with the Holy Ghost's help. St. Paul cries out, O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? And then he answers his own question, saying, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. The cure, you see, for original sin is Jesus. The medicine of his cure is forgiveness. It should be obvious that there can be no forgiveness without judgment. Judgment is the way we know that we have sinned, that we have done something for which we need to be forgiven. God gives us the standards. He also gives us the inclination and the ability to measure our lives by those standards. Jesus' death on the cross guarantees that God forgives us whatever we have done that defies his standards. The crucifix teaches us that God doesn't hold anything against us. We can get ourselves back into a proper relationship with him any time we are willing to face up to our disobedience and then turn away from it and face him. What goes along with that rather remarkable guarantee is an obligation to forgive other people, to be channels of God's forgiveness. That is the quite obvious point of the parable in today's Gospel. God has forgiven each of us an enormous amount, far more than the accumulation of evil any single person on earth can possibly have done to us. Truly accepting God's forgiveness means forgiving other people. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. If we won't forgive, we remain in prison, just like the servant in the parable, imprisoned by our own resentment and imprisoned by our obvious inability to accept the fact that God has forgiven us. So if we want to put all this behind us and get on with our lives, we'll have to admit that mistakes were made, and that we made them on purpose, but we're sorry for them now. Everybody does it, and that is precisely why Jesus had to die. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Remember me, O Lord, King of all power, and put a well-ordered speech in my mouth, that my words may be pleasing in thy sight. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven.
and for all the peaceful departed in Christ. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May the souls of the peaceful departed through the mercies of God rest in peace. Amen. Pray, brethren, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord receive the sacrifice at thy hands, to the praise and glory of his name, for those who are benefit and that of all of his holy church. Amen. <coughs> Mercifully receive these offerings, O Lord, wherewith thou hast willed that atonement should be made unto thee, and that salvation should be restored to us by the power of thy loving kindness. Through thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ church. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, that they may both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to give us grace so to follow their good examples that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant us, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God, devoutly kneeling. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thy love, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty, Provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us, we do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and be seen in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. 
So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul saith. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right to do it. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God who in the multitude of thy saints has compassed us about with so great a cloud of witnesses, that we, rejoicing in their fellowship, may run with patience the race that is set before us, and together with them may receive the crown of glory that fadeth not away. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Passion, 
may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merit and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. Here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy to our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, Yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our so Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. 
the work of me, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou should have come under my roof, but speak the word on me, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou should have come under my roof, but speak the word on me, and my soul shall be healed. Body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserved by body and soul unto everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserved thy body and soul unto everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserved thy body and soul unto everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserved thy body and soul unto everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. I lay my hand upon thee in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, beseeching the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all thy pain and sickness of body may be put to flight, the blessing of health may be restored unto thee. Amen. Amen. May the body of Christ bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Take beneath this remembrance that Christ died for thee, Feed on him in thy heart by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. <laughs>
The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we most heartily thank thee, for thou hast now saved to keep us, who have truly received these holy mysteries, with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and thus to show us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members in corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom, by the merits of his most precious death and passion. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be thou honor and glory, world without end. Amen. We beseech thee, O Lord, that we who have tasted with our lips the food of immortal life may follow the same hereafter with a pure and blameless heart. Through thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Depart in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.